one problem that will always arise when you're using a computer to create music is the fact that it can sometimes sound very robotic, very straight, very mechanical, very computery, in fact. I've created here um, my wee version of Furlis. Have a listen, tell me what you think. The notes are all there, the notes are all correct, and it's all very nice. It sounds a wee bit unhuman though, doesn't it? It's very strict, very mechanical. I've added these pedal lines to try and make it a little more um, realistic, but it's still the, the tempo is still too strict for me. So we have to look at things we can do to try and, and alleviate that. And Sibelius has given you a very nice feature called Live Tempo, and we're going to look at that in this video. To get the benefits of live tempo, you want to get into panorama mode. So I'm going to click this wee button here, put it in panorama, and I'll just zoom in so you can see what's happening. I'm on the play tab, and I'm looking at the live tempo area here, this group here. Now if you're going to use live tempo, what it lets you do basically is conduct the score using the spacebar. Or if you have a foot pedal, you can use that, or you can use a MIDI instrument as well. But I'm going to use the spacebar on the computer. And the first thing you need to do is to calibrate. And the first thing you need to do is to click this wee calibrate button. And what it lets you do is it will start the calibration. You tap in time with the calibration, with the, the clicks that you hear, and it determines how much latency there is on your system, which is very important when it comes to the next step. So let's do that first of all. I'm going to click calibration, and I'm going to tap the space bar in time with the clicks that you hear. Here we go. And you can see it says the latency measured is 20 milliseconds. That's absolutely fine. 20 milliseconds is not a problem. So the computer has now calculated how much latency there is. And I can set about recording my live tempo. Now, the way, to, the way to do this is you select where you want to record from the live tempo. But what you have to make sure is that the playback line is at this note. At the moment, because I've played this, the playback line is away over here. So what I can do... Select that note there, on the play button here, if I click the wee arrow below it, here, I can then move the playback line to the selection, which puts it there. And I'm now ready to start recording. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the space bar, and I'm going to basically pull the tempos around faster and slower than they should be using the space bar, and you'll see what happens. Here we go. When I click the record button, it gives me a wee 3, which means I'm going to set the tempo by clicking the space bar 3 times. So I'm basically going to give it a bar for nothing. And then I've got control of the tempo from there. Let's see what happens. Here we go. 1, 2, 3. We speed up here. And slow down. And speed up. And then repeat. Slow down. Stay slow this time. Let's speed up this time. And slow down quite a lot. And speed up. And slow down. And speed up. Slow down towards the end. So 
So you can see that that gives you quite a lot of control over the playback. What you also have up here though is a graph that shows you how much you deviated from the tempo. The middle line here is the tempo that Sibelius will set. In this case, because I haven't set a metronome mark, it's going to be defaulting at crotchet equals 100. And if it goes above the line, I'm going fast, faster than that. If it goes below the line, I'm going slower than that. And you can see here, because there are two lines, because it's been repeated. The section with only one, the section that doesn't have the repeat, it's just got the one line there. So that's quite nice. That's all very nice. And when I play this back, you may have noticed when I was recording it, it was a wee bit jumpy and a bit jerky. But when I play it back, let's go back from here. see the tempo variations are much smoother. I'm exaggerating the tempo variations just to make it obvious what I'm doing, but you can see you've got complete control over it. However, I'm going to think about this area here, because I personally am a control freak, so I want complete control over each individual quaver in here. Well, I can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, these bars from here through to here. And in the Live Tempo group, I'm going to click the Clear button. And what that will do, I want to clear Live Tempo data from the selected passage. So it's not going to delete the notes this time, it's just going to delete this area here in this graph. So I'm going to click Yes. The notes stay where they are, but I now have no tempo up there. So what I could do now is click on here, hit Record, and just record this section. But I want to have more control than that. So, again, I'm going to select the same area. I'm going to click on the Tap Points button here. This brings up the Tap Points dialog box. And what I can do is I can add Tap Points or I can remove them. So if I decide, uh, if I hadn't um, cleared those, I can remove individual ones. I can set this to apply to the just the selection, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to add some more Tap Points. But and down here it says the frequency of them. Apply a Tap Point every beat as a default the start of every bar or every half bar. I'm going to leave it at every bar just now. And there are my tap points have appeared up there. But remember, I'm looking to have control over each of the quavers. So this isn't enough for me. So you'll notice when I put my mouse up here, this wee dotted line with a dot appears. These are tap points that I can add to the score. And the way you do it is you put it where you want it. See how that one's attached to the last quaver in the bar? So I'm going to double click that. I'm going to do the same there. And there. All the way through here, double clicking, and you can see I've now got a tap point on every quaver. At this part, I'm going to leave it as crotchets, and I'm just going to let that go back into, into crotchets at that point. So what that means now is when I get to this point here, I'm going to start recording the, the, the live tempo from here. But I'm going to tap on the quaver, sorry, the crotchet. Crotch it, quaver, 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 all the way through there, and back into crotch it's here, giving me complete control over the tempo of these bars here. Let me show you what I mean. Select the note I want to start recording from. Remember, I need to set the playback line to that selection. Hit record. It says I need three beats to set the tempo, so I'll do that, and then I'm away. Here we go. So it's going to go one, two, three. stop it at that point. So you see, you know, again, I'm exaggerating the, the, the differences, but you can see how you have control over that. Let me play that back to you, because you may have noticed again, it was a bit jerky when you're recording it, but when you play it back, it's much smoother.
And if I wanted to tidy up that bar, I can do that separately as well. I can even use this to determine how long um, or how slow the, the writs will be at the end, which isn't marked, but I can put one in, or how long pauses last. If I can decide, for example, on the last bar, I'm going to slow that right down, well, I can do that as well. So you get complete control using live playback of all aspects of the playback tempos of your score.